Hi, I'm Joseph. Welcome back to part two of section 6.3 and Hurley's propositional logic. So once again, we're in chapter six, um, section 6.3. Today, we're going to do some classifying statements and comparing statements. And I'm just going to run you through some example homework uh, problems you might encounter. So whether you're doing my class using MindTap or the book or even just following along on the Internet, you would have to. Well, actually, you don't have to have the uh, book necessarily to follow along and learn a little bit on the internet. But anyways, um, you would have seen yesterday's lecture where I unpack the theory on how to do this. Now we're just going to go right in and do it. So, um, yes, what I did is I took example homework problems that you would find in the back of your book starred or either on my tab that are starred. And so in part one, we're going to classify statements again as review. If we go up here, when you classify a statement, you're going to have three options. Um, all truth values, are, if they're all true, they're, uh, the statement is tautologist, it's logically true. If they're all false, it's self-contradictory or logically false. And if at least one is true and at least one is false, the whole thing's contingent. Uh, once again, we're looking at a statement. Um, and then we have in part two of the homework, comparing statements. So now we're going to have two statements. We're going to have to solve for both sides. Um, first, we're going to exhaust these two possibilities, which are logical equivalence, or if it's contradictory, the statements. And then if it um, doesn't pass through this filter, we're going to go through the second filter, which is consistent or inconsistent. Um, and again, Hurley um, unpacks in this paragraph that you're either going to have one of these two up here, or sorry, one of these two up here, or one of these two right here. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just go down. And again, here's the homework examples. I'm going to do 1, 4, 7. I'm going to skip 10 and do 13. I'm going to do 1, 4, 7, and 10. And then I'm going to do 1 and 4, basically. So parts 1, 2, and 3, and then a few from each. So let's go here. And what I suggested in the past is that if I were you, I'd use graph paper. It is the easiest, um, but you can you can see how I do this. So, um, and again, this is review. First thing we're going to do in part one, we're going to ask ourselves, how many propositions are there? How many separate letters? And once again, a proposition is a statement about reality. It's either true or false. There's one, right? So how many lines in the truth table? This is review. Two lines, right? So when we get our values, we simply start plugging away. Oh. Okay. So true, false, true, false, true, false. I got two lines on my truth table. You could even line one, Line two, you'll see in the next section, 6.4, you'll actually have to know your lines for the validity of arguments, but we'll, we'll save that. So then I solve. Um, and then, um, again, solving these logical operators, you can go back to 6.2. So we have a true and a true right here. Um, so on this one, this is true. Again, we're solving for, we're solving for that right now. So a false and a false, that's true. And then we take these truth values and compare them to this first end over here, and we'll solve for this guy. Okay, so I got a true and a true, that's true. I got a false and a true, it's still true. And by the way, what was the main point of this? Um, I was telling you, in the last video lecture. So you have to know how many propositions there are, how many truth lines in the truth table, and then what was the main logical operator. And here, the main logical operator was what? Was it this first horseshoe or the second? First one, right? So um, when we solve for that, we get a true and a true. So uh, let's do this. You can use different colors if you want. So that would be the last, or that would be the main operator. And we have a true and a true. And so what was that if we looked at Hurley? If all the values, so when we classify the statement and we look at all the values, are they, oh, sorry. 
Are they all true? Yeah, so it's tautologous. So that's your answer, right? So we'll, we'll do taut. Uh, just say taut for short, okay? So there you go, first one. Um, again, write the second one. How many propositions are there? Two. How many lines in the truth table? Four. What's the main operator? What is the main operator in this bad boy? So we have to do everything in the brackets first, but in order to do that, we have to do everything in the parentheses first. Then the main operator would be that, right? That last horseshoe. So four lines in the truth table. And what you could do, Hurley does this. Um, Hurley will do, let me just let me just go over here and show you. Hurley will say, look, uh, there's two propositions, and then we'll kind of separate them out. And then we'll say, you know, well, let me let me do this. He'll say, there's two propositions, E and F, right? Then he'll put this um, whole deal over here, right? And I know this is sloppy, but I'm just kind of showing you for it. So we'll put the whole thing over there. And then I'll say, hey, do the truth values for this. So how many lines in the truth table is for? So we'll say true, true. False, false, true, false, true, false. And then it'll say, hey, whatever you got for this E, plug it in over here. So like true, true, false, false, and then so on and so forth, right? What do I suggest? Skip all that. Skip all that. I think it's good, like if you want to follow along with Hurley. What do I recommend? Shortcut? We simply know that there's two propositions, right? Number one. And number two, so the E and the F, right? So in the first one, instead of like, you know, um, putting them all um, together and then plug them in, just whatever the first one is, do the truth values. So true, true, false, false. That's the shortcut, right? Sorry, that's kind of sloppy. And then this one, true, false, true, false. And then what do we do for the second F over here? We simply match what we had for our first F. No problem. True, false. True, false. What about this E? We simply match what we had for the first E. And when you guys are doing eight line, when y'all are doing eight line truth tables or 16 line truth tables, some you know absurd amount, just make sure your propositions match or your truth values for your propositions match. Well, they all match here. So I got my E's, true, true, false, false. And I got my uh, F's as true, false, true, false. So I'm ready to solve. So Again, we have to do whatever's in this brackets first. So we have to start with the parentheses first. So this first horseshoe over here, I'll color code. We'll do this one first. This one second. And the last one we end up with our main operator, this one. Okay, so true and a true, true and a false. So the only time the conditional is false is when the antecedent is true. And the consequent is false. So we know that this guy right here is false. And all the rest are true. Okay, so now we take, and sometimes this will help you if you wanted to. Whenever you solve for something, you could just go like this so that you know in your mind, I have to compare it to um, this side right here. So, that way you're not looking at a bunch of T's and F's and getting confused. Um, so what are we doing? We're matching those two. Okay, so again, what are we trying to solve for? This conditional right here, or the horseshoe right there, So, which is a conditional. Okay, so true and a true, that's true. False and a false, that's true. True and a true, that's true. True and a false, turns out that's the only one that's false. All the rest are true. So you might say, and again, you can color code these however you want. I'm simply going to say, look, that's the last thing I did inside those brackets. Now, the whole brackets are done, right? Why? Because we know that the main operator inside the brackets was this one. The main operator for the whole thing is this one. So now I'm going to compare my red to 
this guy. And I don't have to put squares on any of these. I'm just doing it so that mentally I know what I'm doing. I'm simply going to compare this to this and I'm going to get this uh, horseshoe value. Okay, so true. And so the first line, just so that you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so line one, for example, that's line two, line three, line four. So line one, if we're looking at our red, right? Oh, sorry. For our red and we're comparing it to him. So line one, true and a true, that whole thing would be what? Got it, true. True and a true, the whole thing would be true. True and a false, the whole thing would be false. And a false and a false, the whole thing would be true. So since that's our main operator, we know that that guy right there, that would be how we classify our statement. So if we do that, we have, so we, we have a couple truths, we have at least one false. So let's go back up, right? And let's look. At least one true and at least one false. So the whole thing is contingent, right? So yeah. Contingent. Done. So like I said um, in the last lecture, the hard part is just putting all your truth values in and then solving. Because if you make one mistake with a TRF, <laughs> the whole thing might get messed up. So you just got to go slow, okay? And then the easy part is once you get your value, it's just coming here and saying, okay, which one is it? Is it all true, all false, or at least one true, one false, okay? Is everybody getting the hang of this? All right, let's do the next one, seven. All right, so let's run through my list, and I'm going to go quickly this time. And again... If you're um, if you're at home working with graph paper, you could space these out. Like you could space them out ridiculously far. Um, how, whatever you know is comfortable with you. Um, as you get better with these, you can do them closer together. It might look a little messy, but again, if you use graph paper, it's pretty sharp. Um, okay, so let's just let's just ask the question: How many propositions are here? We have a Z. We have an X. X, C, X, how many propositions? Two propositions. How many lines in the truth table? Four lines in the truth table, right? A little sloppy there. It's all right. And then uh, what's the main operator? Give everybody a chance to look at it. We know we have to do whatever's in the brackets first, whatever in the parentheses before that. So we know this whole bracket thingy, and what's the last thing standing? Yeah, that's the main operator, okay? So Z is our first value. We know we have four lines in the truth table. And so here's our pattern. Whenever we have four lines, the first proposition we have, true, true, false, false. And then the second one, true, false, true, false. And what do I do for my X? I just simply plug in whatever I had for my first X, okay? My Z, true, true. False, false. My X again is true, false, true, false. Notice I'm not using grasp, graph paper here. Graph paper. I'm not using graph paper here, so I kind of have to watch how I space mine out, but they look pretty good. They don't look too sloppy. A uh, four line truth table is not that bad. When you get into eight line and a 16 line, whew, that's when things start veering to the right or the left. And you have to make sure, you have to make sure that your lines, um, going left to right and even going you know all the way down they're lined up okay so we know we have to solve whatever's in the parentheses first so we got our horseshoes so i'm just going to start solving okay and again if you get a little um, confused and you need to stop here go back and review what i'm doing fine because you have this video and you can pause it whenever you want to so i know when i solve for the horseshoe variable right up here right I know the only time it's false is when I have a true antecedent. What's the antecedent right here? And a false consequent. That's the only time the whole thing's false. And I found one right there. And I know just by looking, uh, everything else is true. So I solve for that guy. Um, right over here, I got my wedge now. And I know at least one side has to be true for the whole thing to be true. That one's false. Why? Because there's no true. So then I'm going to compare this guy to that guy to get this. And again, you can put rectangles around both of them if you want, or you can just, you know, however you want to do this. 
Either way, um, I'm just going to do this. So I have a true and a true. And on my conjunction, the only time I can get a, um, a true um, value is when both sides are true. So I got true, false, true, false. So then I'm just going to kind of put it around this guy. And I know now that my last or my main operator is this guy, right? Or this little horseshoe right here. So I know I'm going to get whatever, how to solve that is I'm going to take my truth values for this conjunction that I just did and compare it to this one. And then I will simply be able to solve for this. So I have a true and a true. I know it's true. I have a false um, and a false. I know that that's true. I have a true and a true. I have a false and a false. So the little things, boom, boom. And what do we know for... So that's, those are my truth values for the statement. What do we know if they're all true? We simply know tautologists, right? All true. Done. Okay. So ho hopefully everybody's catching along. And again, the hard part is not solving it at the end. The hard part's doing the work, plugging in the truth values. Okay. So now we've done, we've done uh, a two liner, a four liner, a four liner and then I skipped to 13 because this is an eight liner Whew, here we go all right um, so how many lines on the truth table well how do we know that we have to figure out how many um, propositions there are we have a U a T and an S do we have any other letters no so we have three propositions how many lines on the truth table if you got stuck go back to um, Go back to 6.2, you'll find out, or excuse me, let me just take you there anyways. You can go back up to the beginning of 6.3. I said 6.2, 6.3. I know we have three propositions, eight lines in the truth table, okay? So um, I know that, and this is review, I know that the first proposition will have four Trues and four falses. And then the second one will have two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. And then the third proposition will have, I'll kind of mark them off for you. So when you have eight lines on the truth table for the first proposition, you'll always have two, oh, sorry, four trues, four falses. Okay. The second one, it will just stagger. True, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. Why are we doing this? We're exhausting all possible truth values for this statement, which is ridiculously long. And then we have the third proposition, which is S. So we're going to true, false, true, false. Oops, true, false, true, false. Now, if you got graph paper, you're way ahead of me. See how sloppy mine is? Okay. All right. So T. How do I get this T right here? Well, I simply look at what we got for that T. And it's true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then um, what about my U? I know that was my first one. So true, 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 four trues, four falses. What about this S? Well, whatever I got my, for my first S over there. Right here, right? So true, false, true, false. And what about my U? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, the U is the first one, so it's four trues and four falses. Now I've kept them pretty, I kept this like a pretty good square, so you can see. Um, that I can do my calculations. Okay, what's the main operator? Everybody take a second, look at that bad boy. What is the main operator? And if it helps you, we're on problem 13. Sorry, let me scroll down to it. If it helps you just to look at 13, if that's a little bit more clear for you. So right there, if that helps you more, what's that main operator? So you know you got two brackets and you know the thing in the middle is the main operator. So it's the... Triple bar, you got it. 
Okay? So we know this is the last thing we're going to do. So it doesn't matter which side you start with on this. You just got to basically solve. Um, so we'll start with the left. So we know we got to do the parentheses first. We know the rules for conjunction. And again, from this point on, I'm just going to start solving. I won't explain the rules um, for the wedge conjunction. You can go back and look at those. Um, so wedge, I have a true and a true, so the whole thing's true, true and a false, true. The only time the con, uh, the wedge is, or the conjunct, or sorry, um, the disjunction is false is when the whole thing is when we don't have either side that has a truth. So as long as we have one truth on one side, we're good. The whole thing's true. So you have two falses there. Okay, so that guy. And then I have to take him and I have to solve for the conjunction over here. And the conjunction is at least, um, in order for it to be true, both sides have to be true. So T and T true, T and T true, false and true. So false, true and false, false. False, false, true and false, false, false and false, false. So I know that that's my main operator inside the brackets. And that's done. So now I gotta come over here. Whew, okay, got a lot of tildes. So simply, oh, by the way, just as a side note, you see how I had that where it wasn't quite clear? It was like barely. Sometimes if you don't have enough on that left-hand side and you just see this, you might actually think it's a false, but it was actually a true. And this will matter when you're doing long truth tables. You really have to be precise with, um, you know, how you write these. And it's much easier doing this on paper than it is on this tablet, but here we go. Okay, so I have my all my values. Every single one of these is actually the opposite because I have a tilde in front of every single one of them over here to the right. So I'm just gonna slowly take the opposite. Right, because a tilde negates whatever value you have, you have to take the opposite. For some of you tildes, you know, they, they and they freak you out. I'll just give you an example. So let's say we have a B and we know that the B is true. Well, we have a tilde T, so we just know that it's false. We're literally taking the opposite of that truth. So that's all I'm doing over here. Okay. And this is worth saying this to you, by the way. Um, the only way you'll get through this section truthfully and then the next uh, section 6.4 is to literally work these out on your own step by step. You cannot just look at me do it and figure out, oh, I could do it. No, you literally have to do this on your own as you're. So the best thing to do is maybe take my examples, try to do the whole thing yourself and then look at what I've done after you've done the whole thing yourself, because that's how you're going to learn these is by literally doing them. OK, so let's go over here, take the opposite. And then over here, so I have true, false, true, false. Okay, so false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. Over here I have true, true, okay, so. All right, so I got them all locked in. Okay, now I have to solve for the wedge and this, yeah, right here. That's the operator we're going for. So, and uh, don't be confused. There's a lot of variables going there, but you know what I'll do? I'll make it easy for you. We're going to use this one and this one to solve for this one. We're going to use this one and this one to solve for this one. Okay. All the way down. Okay. Here we go. So false and a false, the whole thing's false, false and a false, the whole thing's false, true and a false. It's true. Oh boy. True and false, the whole thing's true. True and false, the whole thing's true. True. So I know that's a, it's like the Congo jungle inside of our truth table, right? <laughs> that's why I said graph paper is pretty awesome. But we know at least for that side we've solved. So now let's come down over here. 
Um, again, it's a, it's a wedge, so we have to have at least a one side true for the whole thing to be true. So this one's false. True. Uh, false. True. 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 So. Got that guy. And if I'm going to solve for the conjunction, which is this one right here, I'm going to be using the values for this one and this one to get this one. Okay. So we have to have both sides um, true in order for the whole thing to be true. Okay. Um, so let's go. Oh, and by the way. Forgot to box him because he goes all the way up. Okay, so the first line, and this might help again. So as I'm doing this line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm over here in this section, right? But I, but when I say you know I'm on line one, two, three, you know where I'm at. Okay, so line one, I have a false and a false, so the whole thing is false. Second line, they both have to be true, so it's false. Both have to be true, so it's false. Ah, that one's true. This one's true. That one's true. That one's true. That one's true. So not to be confused. Since that was the main operator on, on this side of it all, I'll just, you know, put a green there. Wow, so we're finally in the position now to be able to compare the main operator here with the main operator there to get him. Oh, sorry. To get him, and compare this one and this one, okay? So what are the rules for the um, triple bar or the biconditional? Uh, both sides have to be the same in order for it to be true. If one side mismatches, the whole thing's false. So uh team you see here so i have a, a line one true and a false the whole thing is true oh sorry the whole thing's false because they both have to match so false the other one false they don't match don't match don't match don't match all the way down okay so i know now that was the main operator, and they're all false. If they're all false, self-contradictory for number 13, right? The hard part's doing all the work. And once you do all the work and you see, oh, sorry, you see that they're all false, all those values of the main operator, and once again, what was that main operator? It was a triple bar. The last thing we did, we know it's self-contradictory. So we can simply come back and say, ha, ah, rest assured, this whole thing self-contradictory. Okay? So there we go with the four examples of classifying statements and all the work. And again, color code it however you want, draw rectangles around your truth files however you want. I've had one student before, by the way, not even use T's and F's, get this. This student used ones and zeros, one for true and zero for false, because he was a computer programmer. And I was like, whoa, I, <laughs> I was like, hey, that, it works, but I didn't want to go there, but he was awesome at it. So that's how he plugged in his values and he did everything right. Um, so again, Logic's all about abstract thinking, there, and there's different ways that we abstract out how we do uh, work out our problems, and you know whatever works for you. But you just want to follow along with my method, and there you go. Okay, so now we compare statements. All right, uh, how many propositions? We have a D and a B, so two propositions. Going back to the basics, two props, right? It's a proposition. It's a statement about reality that a state of affair, a state of affairs either obtains, it's either true or false. So we have two. 
uh, two letters. How many lines in the truth table? Four lines. What's the main operator? Ah. So on this one, there's no main operator for one single statement. For example, like number four, the main operator was this horseshoe over here. For this one, you're just solving each statement. And you can you can literally just say, look, the main operator is that one and that one, because now it's two statements, right? Okay, so we're just gonna plug in right away. So we know there's four lines. So the first one's true, true, false, false. And then the second one is true, false, true, false. Okay, so over here, oh, you'd be tempted. You know how I you know how on this side we just we ended with our B last? You would think right when you go to the other side, you start with the um B because you just did it. Just make sure your D values are the same. So true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, so we're solving for a wedge here, and we know that at least one side has to be true for the whole thing to be true. We know we got that, and you know what? For this one, we'll just use that. And for this side, oh, we have to notice this is... Um, Oh, yes, I like this. So that wasn't the main. I, I was so quick, right? It's this. You have to do what's in the parentheses first. Did anybody see that before I uh, point it out? Good for you. Awesome. So you thought that I made a mistake and you were right. I did. So that's not the main operator there because that's inside the parentheses. So we have to do everything in here first. Then that's the main operator. It's the tilde last. Okay. And, and the reason I was I was almost tempted to negate these values all the way down first, and I realized, oops, there's a parenthesis, so we do this last. All right, so let's negate these guys. Okay, so whatever I have, I take the opposite. Okay, and then I'm going to solve for my conjunction. Lucky for me, they're right next to each other. Both have to be true for the whole thing to be true, so... Uh, I have one. Um, oh, I have one that's true. Okay, so I'm going to take these values that I got there. That's the main operator inside the parentheses. And then I'm going to negate that. So I got a true, false, true, true. And then for sake of simplicity, we'll just say, look, these are the main operators, okay, for the, for the left side, the right side. And what you have to do now, you have to com care, compare values. You have to go across. So true and a true, true and a false, true and a false. Oh, sorry, true and a true, false and a true. And when I'm doing this, um, let me see here. Same truth value on each line. So I've made a mistake somewhere. Okay, okay, so let me look. Okay, so false. All sides are true, false. Okay, so true, 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 false. And then over here, I'm just quickly double checking. Do, do, do. And my B is true, false, true, false. And then I take the opposite, false, true, false, true. And then I solve for this. The whole thing's false. The whole thing's true. The whole thing's false. The whole thing's false. And then I take the opposite, so false. False, true, true. And then I compare over here. So true, false, true, true, false, false. Huh. Make sure I got the right. Mm -hmm. Not. Oh, that 
that's it. All right. Okay. So for some reason, when I cut and pasted this bad boy over, the tilde did not show up. Ooh, and that changes everything. So let's do this. Let's just imagine that this bad boy right here is a tilde, okay? Tilde. So then we'd say, first we'd have to, let me just redo this side, it won't take long. And this is actually really good that I made a mistake and I'm gonna keep this. There's no way I'm gonna re-edit this video and I'll tell you why. Because sometimes you'll make a mistake and you'll have to do what I just did. And that would be the good learning lesson. So I have a D, so I know my true, true, false, false, right? True, false, true, false. And then what I forgot to do is, because we the, the tilde didn't copy over is negate it right away. Okay. And then now I solve for um, this whole thing. So the wedge, at least one side has to be true. Okay, so. Um, so now we'll compare those two. So when I do that, line one, true and a true, line two, false and a false, line True and a two, line four, true and a true. So every time I go over, they're the same, right? Same truth value. And what do we know? Same truth value in each line. Boom, logically equivalent. Okay, so we know that this whole thing logically equivalent. That's the answer. Okay? All right. Everybody still with me? Good, here we go. Let's go down to seven. Okay, so I have an E, a C, and an L. And I know, um, so how many propositions are there? How many lines on the truth table? All right, so E, C, and L. So I'm simply going to take that first letter, and I know that I'm going to have four trues, four falses. And then the second letter, so the first one, I'll just put a one there, two, three. So the first one, four trues, four falses. The second one, two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses, so on and so forth. And then the third one, true, false, true, false, all the way down. Ready? There we go. Okay, so we'll do the same thing for the other side. And if the clicking is driving you nuts, like you can hear the clicking of my thing, I don't know how to get rid of that sound. I'm kind of new at recording these on the tablet. I don't know how to eliminate that. If, if one of you wants to let me know, you can leave a comment. Um, so, okay, so first thing we're gonna do is solve for this operator first because that's our main operator. And then over here, that's our main operator. So over here, we'd solve for this first. Okay, so I'm gonna fly through this. I'm just gonna start solving for the horse first horseshoe. So but uh, the only time it's false is when I have the uh, antecedent true and the consequent false, and that's what I'm looking for here. And I know that all the rest are true. That's just the way solving this horseshoe works. Um, so on this guy, I'm obviously going to use this one and this one to solve for this horseshoe up here. So this guy's false, false, false. All the rest are true. Oh, that one's false too. And all the rest are true. So I'll just say... Um,
First statement, boom. Second one. Um, start there. I'm just looking for the. I'm just looking for when the conditional is false. That's all. And I've I've got both conditions, so all the rest are true. Okay, so sorry, that was a little sloppy. Okay. Um, and then I will use this and this to get the solving for that. Okay, so true and true is true, true and false. I'm only going to look for when it's false. And it turns out all the rest are true. And again, you would have already completed your own. And then you would have watched me do it to see. So we go all the way across, okay? We compare them one at a time. There's eight lines. Why are we doing that? Well, we're trying to compare statements, right? This is statement one about reality, statement two about reality. These are the um, all possible truth values of these two statements. We've got the main operators here um, for each side, and then we're going to compare. So we've got a true and a true, false and a false, true and a true, true and a true. And so let me see, true and a true, true. false and a true. So I have one that doesn't line up, one that doesn't line up. But we have true is false. So on this one, we know that there. Uh, we know that it's not this um, pair. Because remember in the beginning, I told you you exhaust this pair. If you don't get one of these answers, then you go to this one. There's at least one line on which the truth values are both true, consistent. And versus this one, there's no line on which the truth values are both true. So we know it's consistent because we have at least one line in which um, the truth values are both true. And what line would that be? Line one, we have that one, they're both true. This one, they're both false, that one, they're both true. So it turns out lines one, three, four, five, those are all true. And then we over here, false and a true. So we know that this whole thing Okay. And again, if you were um, stuck on that, you can go back and look. And we're almost there. Everybody hanging in with me? Awesome. All right. So how many propositions here? Three, right? Three props. How many lines in the truth table? Eight lines. What's the main operator for this left side? It is... This, what's the main operator for this side over here? It's this. So we're just going to solve. I'm just going to go true, 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 true. Okay. Second one is true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. Last one, true, false, true, false. Okay. I'll do the same thing over here. Um, and then B's, uh, okay, my T is true, false, true, false, and then my B is true, true, false, false. Okay, now I solve. Um, so I'm going to do this conjunction first. And if I go fast, it's fine. You can do these on your own and then look at them. So I'm going to use these values, compare with those values to get this triple bar up there. Triple bar, both sides have to be the same in order for the whole thing to be true. So I have a true, false, false. False. And how do I know? How do I know that this one's false? Well, because this one's true, that one's false. They're not the same. Both are false, so they're the same. So, um, so let's do this. And let's say, okay, that's my main operator there. It's 
totally solved. Now let's come over here. And we've got to negate right away over here. We've got to take, take care of this tilde. Remember what happens if you don't take care of that tilde. Remember that one I had to redo? Okay. False. True. True. Okay. And then we have the horseshoe. Oh, yeah, this is cool because they're right next to each other. So that makes it easy for it to solve. So true, false. That's a false. Um, that's a false. All the rest are true. Okay. Um, now I'm going to take this one, compare it to the value of this one to get this conjunction up here. So conjunction, both, both of them have to be true for the whole thing to be true. So we know it's false. True. Uh, and I know that Okay, Whew. so <clears throat> line, again, line one, two, three. You don't have to do this, but just, you know, just to keep up with me. Line one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. So uh, we have a true and a false, false and a true, false and a true, false and a true, false and a false, true and a false, true and a false, true and a false. We have no line here in which both values are true. Therefore, it's inconsistent. Okay, And we know it's not these first two because we don't have the same truth value in each line and we don't have an opposite truth value in each line. All the way through. How do we know that? Because we know uh, one of these we have a false and a false. So right there that um, negates these two parts. So now we have to drop down to, sorry, these two parts. Now we have to drop down to these two and we know that it's inconsistent. Okay. So congratulations, you've stayed with me for all those um, in part two. Now, this section, this, in my opinion, it is the hardest because you got to go from the English to the translation. Hurley does make it easy on you. And he says, look, well, let, let's just read. And you might not have this kind of homework in your mind tap of the book. You may. Oh, sorry. He says, use true tables to obtain the answers to following exercises. The letters can be used in constructing the true tables are given in parentheses. So he makes it easy and he says, look, there's only two propositions, which means you have four lines in a truth table. And he says, the only way to translate this is to use these two letters. Awesome. That kind of simplifies it. And basically, these are statements that you're, um, you're, you're classifying the statements here. And then you're going to figure out you know, you're going to try to answer this question. So let me just cut to the chase and come here. So again, two propositions, four lines on the truth table. And let's look for some trigger words. Renowned economist Harold Carlson makes the following. The balances of the payments will decrease if and only if. And then however, and it's not the case that we've got a negation in there. Ooh, we got an either. Oh, sorry. Or the balance steady or the balance. Hmm. I won't type this in. I'll just. You can look at um, your homework right there. So that just gets into here. So it says other rates will or not mean or the balance of the payments will be decreased. OK, so we got trigger words. We got either. Or we have if and only if so my if and only if I know I'm going to have a triple bar. Um, however, this is tricky. Now you're going to have to go up to page 336 
all the way up to 336. And if you look on that page, it gives you the English for what symbol, what logical operator you would use for the word however. Anybody tell me what it is? 336. Actually, I won't even go there. You can look it up. Um, but it is. <clears throat> oh, I don't know what's going on with that madness. Okay, so it's the conjunction, right? And we know we have an either or. So we know we have at least three logical operators. Um, triple bar, conjunction, wedge. So what we're going to do is I'm going to translate this out. Um, so we have the balance of the payments will decrease if and only if um, the interest r rates remain steady. So we know for the first one, that's pretty easy. We know that we're going to um, look at this whole statement. And we know that this word, however, is a conjunction. So then we have the next statement. It is not the case that either interest rates, you're going to have to go back up and look at how you use tildes on parentheses. And in this, in this case, it turns out. And again, I'm just doing this homework for you. You can go back up to 6.1, 6.2 and, and figure out how you would um, symbol or translate this. However, so let me read this to you. However, it's not the case that, it's not the case that either interest rates will not remain the same. So my interest rates will not remain the same. I'm negating them or balance will decrease. So that's how I translate it. I know I got four lines on the truth table. So first letter, I'm just going to go true, true, false, false. And over here, my I, true, false, true, false, true, true, false, false. Um, let me just solve for this uh, triple bar over here. Okay. Um, let me come over here to this I and let me negate it right away. I'm just going to take the opposite of what I already have. And then I'm going to use this guy and this guy to get him. So let's do true, true, false, true. And then so I got my value here. And all of that is in parentheses, right? And then I have to negate it to get this tilde, right? So false, false, true, false. How do I know that? Because I'm looking right here and I'm just taking the opposite. I'm going right over. There you go. And then I finally take um, the values that I got from, and I'll make this simple for you. I'll kind of, let's say, look, I got to use this, and I got to use this, and I got to compare both of them to get this, okay? So in order for the conjunction to be true, both sides have to be true. So I know this is false. False, false, false. Um, so if all the values are, sorry, if all the value, eh, let me use a different one. Yeah, let me use a green. Actually, no, let me use a red since they're all false. You know what I'm saying? Just the color all false. Maybe that should be red. So if they're all false, I can come up here and say, well, let's go back to, again, this is review. Um, all false, self-contradictory. And if it's self-contradictory, then we just say Carlson's prediction is false because Carlson was predicting, right? What was he predicting? Um, that either, you know, that the balance of the balance of payments will decrease if and only if 
He was saying, so in short, we take Carlson's English, we translate it, we find the operators, we solve for this whole statement that he's you know, making about reality, about, about what? about balance of payments and interest rates, right? And we're saying, look, whatever he whatever he predicted, the whole thing's self-contradictory. And it just means that the whole statement itself is absurd. It's all false. There's no there's no line on this um, you know where we look across and for that whole statement and we say that anything's uh, you know that the main operators true, they're all false. So you might just say his his uh, his logic here, propositionally, meaning his statement about reality, the whole thing's absurdly false. That's all. And Carlson might be a nice person, but the logic that Carlson's using is self-contradictory. Okay, so that's kind of the practical aspect of hey, why are we doing all these truth values and and operators and propositions and lines on the truth table? Well, we're trying to to get at the um, the truthfulness or the falsity of statements about reality, which are propositions, right? So it's self-contradictory. Let's go to number four. And this is the last homework problem, okay? So this is it. And all we can use are SNL. So you can you can simply if, at this point, if you want to, you can simply read number four right here. And he tells you, look, you can only use an S and an L. That's all you got. And two astronomers are discussing uh, supernovas. Uh, Dr. Frank says research has established that if we're looking for trigger words, uh, then, and then to the second one, research has also established that also um, that either, ooh, either, oh, got a tell to there, or, um, so all I've done was I've kind of highlighted some trigger words. We have an if then, so we know we're going to have or she, right? We have also, what's also, it's connecting uh, two statements for one, you know, a bigger statement. And the word also go up to page 336 and you'll find out that also is a conjunction. We'll translate that as a conjunction. And then down here we have an either or. So those are our three operators, right? Logical operators. And then we know we have an S and L. So we got two propositions. We have four lines on the truth table. We have one, two, three logical operators. All right, we are ready to start plugging in. And I'm just gonna, at, you know, at this point you can stop and, and practice. Like how would you do this on your own? And then, you know, unpause the video and look at how I'll do it to see if you're right. Because again, how you learn is to do this by yourself and struggle through it. Because if you just look at me and there is no struggle, you won't learn. I promise you. Because um, I've been teaching this for six years now and the students who struggle through these to, you know, do the work on their own. So they, they, um, they get better. And then it's, you know, true, false, true, false. You, you, you become like a robot <laughs> when you plug these in. So we'll simply go through this. All right. First, um, first one. So let's go true, true, false, false. Why do we know? Cause there's four lines on the truth table. How do we know that? Cause there's two propositions. Okay. So S I know it's true, true, false, false. I know my L is true, false, true, false. And then right away over here, I'm just going to uh, take the opposite because there's a tilde. Okay, um, opposite over here. And I'm going to use these values or those values to get this. So at least one side has to be true. That's not working. That works. Let us say, yeah, this this kind of this whole side over here and then i'm going to solve for i'm going to do this uh, left side now so i'm only going to pick the one uh, line where i know it's false and then all the rest are just true okay so i got this guy now and i'm going to compare it to this guy to get him he's the main operator right he's the very last thing we do and how do we know that well Again, if you come up here, 
because it says you know, it's making a statement about reality. Then it says also. So this is this is our English for saying, hey, there's something else. You know, there's one more thing, which is book in those parentheses. Right. And we know that it's an, uh, an either or here and there's some negations. So. Um, yeah. And for a conjunction, both sides have to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. So, so this is false. This is false. This is true. And this is true. So I would say to classify this statement, how do we classify it? Just as review. We'll come up. And we're not dealing with multiple statements, right? We're dealing with one statement. We're dealing with one statement. Are they all true, all false, or at least one true, one false? Okay, so the whole thing's contingent, right? Because we have at least one true and one false. So we know this whole thing's contingent. I don't even know why I try to correct that. Look how sloppy it is. Okay, so we know the whole thing is contingent. So it's at least, it's possible for, um, it's possible for Dr. Frank to uh, be right about this prediction that he has. So it's it's possible that both astronauts are correct. If, if they are, um, then there's a supernova that will not occur within 10 light years from Earth. <clears throat> okay, so... Dr. Frank and Dr. Harris, if both of them, uh, if, if it's contingent or if it's possible, how do we know that? Because in, in these statements, we have at least one where there it's a possible truth value that just says, look, this is actually possible. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. So um, I've done a lot of work from section one or part one, part two, part three. So um, again, <clears throat> as review, how many propositions, how many lines in the truth table? What are your main operators? You know, exhaust what's in the brackets first and then inside the brackets, what's in the parentheses. If you don't have brackets, you just do the parentheses first and then you solve for your main operators. And, and, and again, as review, for example, like up here, I said, like, you know, for number one and part two, this is the main operator for this side, the main operator for that side. And then we know we compare. And then if you're just doing statements, you have to figure out, well, what's the main operator? And you can go back and pause these videos and I highlighted the main operators. So that is it. Thank you for staying um, with me this whole time. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Good luck on your homework.